I apologize for the editing in the video I put up a couple of hours ago. YouTube, once again, while I'm uploading that video, getting ready to go live with it, hits me with another copyright strike. I don't know any way around this, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. Sometimes I include video clips. They go all the way through, no problem. Other times I do it, can't get it through. Sometimes they won't even let me upload the video. This particular one, I could have uploaded it, but all the money that it generated was going to go to the, uh, the NBA. So... I just removed the clip from the video. If any of you guys know how to get around this, I could have appealed the decision and had someone from YouTube manually watch the video. But by the time they had done that, it would probably be Sunday before the thing got uploaded and I wanted to go ahead and get it done. So if you guys know of any way to get around copyright, and this should be fair use in my opinion, I wasn't stealing their content I was using it to show you guys something. So if you guys know of a way to get around this, please let me know. Either put it in the comment section or preferably email me at btlkc84 at gmail.com. All right. Ladies of the NWSL, you better be careful. You better be careful. This offseason, the NWSL is on a mission. We are on a mission to cleanse our league. According to the NWSL Players Association, nothing short of complete transformation of our league will suffice. Now, I happen to agree with that last statement. The NWSL does need a complete transformation. They need to transform from a league that loses millions of dollars to a business that generates profit. They need to transform from a league no one gives a shit about to a league that draws television ratings. Now, of course... You actually need to be on television and able to draw ratings. The NWSL, they don't have a TV deal because no one is watching. This league is on the brink of non-existence. And this might be the most important offseason in their brief history. The powers that be in the NWSL, they are folding to political pressure. And it is killing this league. Instead of standing up to players who, by the way have zero leverage. Players in the NWSL have no leverage. But watching everything that's happened the past couple of months, you would think NWSL players are the most powerful in sports. Back in October, players sent a list of eight demands they wanted to have met this offseason. Demands? Demands? You have the audacity to be making demands? This league has been in existence almost 10 years, never made a profit. I'm sure the owners have demands as well. Just one, for the love of God, can you ladies generate some money? Can you generate enough interest to where we make money? 481,000 people paid money to attend an NWSL game this season. Portland was 25% of that number. The Portland Thorns average about 14,000 people a game. Not bad. Rest of the league? between three and 4,000. Yet somehow, players in the NWSL have this sense of entitlement, this false narrative that they have power. There have been five coaches either fired or resigned from the NWSL this offseason. Rory Dames was one of the latest. He was the head coach of the Chicago Red Stars for nine years. He just led him to the championship game last weekend. He was 95, 49, and 55 throughout his career in Chicago. Made the playoffs seven out of nine years. None of that mattered. Your accomplishments don't matter when it comes to hurting feelings. Rory Dames resigned earlier this week amidst allegations of emotional and verbal abuse. Not sexual abuse like former North Carolina coach Paul Riley. We are talking about alleged Verbal abuse. The thing about verbal abuse, in most cases anyway, is that it's subjective. What I view as tough love, tough coaching, someone else might see it as verbal or emotional abuse. It is no secret that coaches in sports can be brutally tough on their players. Nick Saban is notorious for being tough to play for. Hell, Nick Saban just went off on his own fan base the other day. Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight was tough. He would have never made it as a coach in today's climate. The first time he yanked a player off the court or got in his face or threw a chair across the court, 
Social justice warriors everywhere would push for his cancellation. Rory Dames is no different. From what I read, he was tough on his players. I'm going to read the allegations against him, give you my thoughts on it, and you can also decide for yourself whether or not this constitutes abuse. Here is what they're saying constitutes abuse in 2021. Texting players at all hours. What the hell's wrong with that? We live in a society with constant communication. Coaches in every sport text their star players at all hours. You think Sean Payton gives a shit if it's 2 a.m. and he has something that he wants to discuss with Drew Brees? Time doesn't matter to him. He has a game to prepare for. I don't understand how Rory Dames texting players is abuse, but I digress. Let's keep going. Asking players to spend significant time with him at lunches and dinners and making it mandatory. Again, I'm not sure what is abusive about this. In a team sport, it is critical to have camaraderie, chemistry. One of the ways you build that is spending time together. All right, joking that an Asian player should be smarter than how she was playing. Okay, let me ask you this. If he had said the same thing to a white player, would that be considered abuse? Have you not had a coach tell you before that you're smarter than how you're playing? That's not abuse. That's not racism. That is a coach trying to motivate an unmotivated player. Calling a player from Appalachia trailer trash. Hmm. Okay. That's not good. <laughs> I mean, that's not good. Name calling from a person in authority to a subordinate is never good. I'll give them that one. Withholding family time from a player due to her performance during a game. Now, this sounds bad, but this is something that is common in sports. When a player doesn't perform or the team doesn't perform to a high standard, they get punished. They have to stay late after the game, run drills, or whatever the case may be. And it's not only common in sports, it's common in day-to-day -day life. If you bullshit around at your job and your performance is shit, what happens? Your boss punishes you. That is not abuse, that's life. Allegedly benching a player after she introduced him to her boyfriend. <laughs> Seriously? Really? I couldn't find any more details about this allegation, but this is a stretch. To me, this sounds like a disgruntled player. Unless Rory Dames had a crush on her or an affair going on with this player, why in the hell would he give a shit about her boyfriend? Maybe, just maybe, the player was benched because she sucked. She wasn't performing. I don't know because there aren't any details available. But here's what I do know. None of this is good for the NWSL. This is already a league that is struggling to find coaches and players. They don't pay any money because the league doesn't make any money. They have to essentially force some players on the U.S. national team to play in the NWSL. The damn players don't even want to be there. I'm talking about Kristen Press. She was the first to complain about the verbal abuse of Rory Dames. Back in 2014, she took her complaints to Sunil Gulati, the president of the USSL. He looked into it, didn't find her allegations to be credible, and dismissed her complaint. She then demanded to be traded from Chicago, didn't want to play for Rory Dames anymore. So they trade her to Houston. She then complained about that. That's not fair. I don't want to play in Houston. Newsflash, ladies. This is a business. You are an asset. Team owners can trade assets to whomever offers them the best deal. It's not about being fair. It's about making money or trying to make money in this case. Let me tell you why this constant bitching and complaining and the constant allegations against coaches is going to be detrimental to the NWSL. Now, granted, some of these allegations against NWSL coaches are credible. Paul Riley was abusing his power to sexually abuse players. That happened. That ain't cool. I think we can all agree on that. But some of these other complaints, like Rory Dames, it's a little more of a gray area. Some will say it's verbal abuse, others won't. Here's the thing. At some point, team owners are going to have enough. This league will become more trouble than it's worth. Anytime you hire a coach, you have to worry if he comes down hard on a player, will there be allegations of abuse? 
The league is already bleeding money. On top of all that, you have players whining about their pay, complaining about coaches, wanting more power. NWSL players, they want the power to have a role in hiring the league commissioner. What world are they living in? Commissioners work for owners, not players. They're going to complain their way out of a job. They're going to complain the NWSL into extinction. From what I've read, Rory Dames didn't deserve to be fired or forced to resign. He should have been condemned for some of his actions, but I didn't read anything that should have caused him to lose his job. The dude loses his job because he's hard on his players and they win. They make the playoffs every year. Good luck finding male coaches in this league. Who in the hell would subject themselves to this kind of bullshit and not make any money? There is a reason the complaints against Rory Dames were dismissed in 2014. There was no cause. They couldn't find anything he did wrong. But keep on complaining, ladies. Keep on. Keep whining about equal pay. Keep making unreasonable demands. You're going to demand yourself right into the unemployment line. All right, let me know what you guys think of these abuse allegations against Rory Dames. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.